Good evening. Uh, I'm going to call to order the uh, Comprehensive Plan Update Committee uh, for October 5th, uh, 2022. Uh, first uh, order of business is to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, can I ask, are there any corrections or additions? Seeing none, um, I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the meeting minutes? No. Uh, all in favor of approval? Opposed? I have to abstain. abstain. You yep. Yes. I wasn't here. Yeah. Okay. And um, uh, just for the record, did we get Brad? No, he seems to have stepped away. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So, old business is uh, three on the agenda. Review of the uh, Comprehensive Plan Committee top three items of importance. And uh, just to refresh everyone's memory, at the last meeting, what we did is uh, brought a list of uh, what we consider to be the top three um, questions or issues that we felt um, uh, existed personally um, on uh, as far as uh, the uh, update on the Comprehensive Plan was concerned. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was also going to be used uh, primarily to give us uh, some idea of forming a questionnaire, citizen questionnaire, or short one, uh, to try and hit the November elections. And uh, while it seemed like at the time there was plenty of time to do that, I hmm. think that that's something that we have to determine today if we're going to actually make it happen. Um, so uh, uh, based on that, um, uh, I'll just open it up for Please discussion. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I'm not. I'm not hearing any audio at all. Okay. Okay, Sean, do you know why Brad on Zoom wouldn't be hearing audio? No, but I'm going to look into it right now. Okay, Brad, can you hear me at all? Hi there. I can hear you. <laughs> okay, Tom can hear. Okay, you can. Um, can you hear anyone at the meeting? If I speak, Tom, can you hear okay, me? We're all muted. Okay. There you go. There's one. I can hear you. Okay. You're, you're at home, though, right? I am. Yeah. Um, I can't see anything of the meeting. No, you won't be able to. I can't hear anything of it. You won't be able to see anything. Maybe you should turn anything. up his can computer, Can you guys possibly? see the meeting at all? No. No, you won't be able to see it. If they're getting oh, audio, that would suggest that it's going out, okay. right? Okay, if can I unmute you know? me, does that get, get can you now? No, that's no, going to cause us to stay. And just, just to, um, if, if you would, this is Brad McCurtain. We just now came into the meeting. We've been waiting since before, before 630, so I, I don't know what's gone on here, but can you, if anything's been voted upon, can you re- Revoted or sure, well, Brad. What we did so far is just uh, approve the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, I don't believe we got your vote on that. Yeah, I had a, uh, I actually had a question on the minutes. So okay, uh, so <laughs> uh, I would move to uh, uh, basically reopen minutes so Brad can uh, uh, have his say. Okay, Brad, if you just tell us what your additions or um, corrections are. Well, well, it's a question on the minutes themselves. I, I didn't see in the minutes any reference to, um, I think it was Kayla who brought up about doodling. And, and instead I saw in there that uh, we were going to, that Sue was waiting for all of us to get back to her with dates on the, the trip on, on the lake. And I'm, I just was really confused by that because I thought that, that Kayla said, hey, I'll send out a doodle to everybody. And it was either on today's meeting, which I didn't get, or on that, which I didn't get either. So I'm just trying to figure out what I missed in the minutes or the meeting that didn't show up in the minutes. So can someone clarify that? Um, I think we mentioned maybe doodle, but we settled on everybody contacting Sue since it was such a short turnaround or we expected it to be yeah. a short turnaround with our available times and then she would determine if that worked but I think we were unable to um, get enough responses and right. then I think the weather's turned 
Well, I have another date, two, two other dates now, but okay. they're probably a last ditch for this fall, I would think, because it's going to get a bit nippy. Okay, so getting back to the minutes, mm -hmm. as far as uh, the uh, uh, clarification, uh, do you have uh, some addition you'd like to have, it, uh, Brad, admitted to the minutes, and then we can arrange that, and then we can vote it? Um, I don't know how to put the addition in. I mean, I heard Doodle, and I, and I was pretty sure Kayla said, I will send out a Doodle, as opposed to maybe we can send out a Doodle. It's not a big thing, except that, you know, when I brought it up, and I think someone else brought it up here also, uh, that we were expecting doodles, and then the word was, well, we were waiting for everybody to get back, and, and then Sue, um, you know, I'm, I'm more on procedures than I am on the minutes, but if, if, if you could play back those minutes at some point and see what was said, it certainly would be clarification, and just as a going forward, try to keep this in a frame it in a positive sense. Sue, if there's something where we're supposed to get back to you, um, if you could send that out because I, oops, I sure. Sure, but Brad, if I could I just. I sure didn't. Yeah. If, yeah, if I could interject it, um, uh, I think the understanding at the first meeting and my understanding of the town meetings basically is it's actually the, the video that is the formal record uh, of the meeting. Yeah. And therefore, um, the minute that I've seen uh, primarily are, are relatively brief um, uh, because it's just a general outline of what, what transpired at the meeting. The official minutes that we're v really voting on is the, the uh, uh, electronic record. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The, so, the minutes so, are a guideline, so, so, I so go back Brad, if, if you don't want to offer a, a change to the minutes, um, then uh, I, I guess we can let the vote stand and you have uh, the option to add that vote. So I'll, I'll recall that vote. So um, uh, it, 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 are there any other additions uh, or omissions uh, on the minutes? Seeing none, um, I'd ask all in favor of approving the minutes as written, raise your hand. Okay. Uh, those, the, the, the no's. One and one. Opposed one. because I, I think that was critical and should have been in the minutes. I understand, but. and and now they will be, and uh, mm -hmm. then we have uh, one abstention, one abstention. and that's because Greg wasn't here at the last meeting. Right. Correct. Yes. So I I think you know for the purposes of process we did everything right. Okay. Uh, so under old business, um, review of the uh, uh, comprehensive plans top three items as <clears throat> as I started to say. Um, uh, we, we did discuss it at the last meeting uh, and offered our three. Uh, we made a listing of those, and so I open uh, the board up to discussion on those three, uh, um, or, or on, on the uh, 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 discussion regarding the, the three most important uh, to each individual on the on the board. Um, just to, not to editorialize, but basically my sense of this is uh, it'll give us a good sense after looking at what we uh, selected as a board, um, how that mirrors, let's say, a brief survey at town meeting. So we can get a sense very quickly, you know, are we on board with at least the individuals that are willing to stop and fill out a survey or put a sticker on a board for us? Um, so that, that would help to validate it. Uh, but I'd open this up to discussion on, on those um, items of most importance. I can tell you I'm kind of a numbers guy, so yeah. I, I kind of went through and uh, probably we have at one point and kind of looked at all of the answers, uh, including those from the municipal side, um, I included in it. Uh, and this is what I got. Uh, the number one was to preserve natural resources and water quality. Surprise, surprise. And that represented eight responses out of the 12, uh, and that was 66%. Uh, that was tied with town services, um, as far as also having eight out of the 13 votes, and um, of the 12 votes, and that was also 66% of our opinions. Um, housing was, there were seven individuals that mentioned it specifically, that was 58%. Uh, land use 
Uh, there were four individuals that mentioned it specifically. That was 33%. That was tied with transportation, which was four individuals uh, spoke to it directly at 33%. And then lastly, recreation, three, and that was at 25%. Now I listed these, and I only listed those um, uh, areas um, where there was more than one. So if there were two or more, then I listed it. So obviously that's why it doesn't add up to the, the total. Um, but that's, you know, this is a, a very crude way of doing it. But it gives us some sense as to, uh, you know, what maybe the, uh, we might put on the uh, community um, survey uh, at, at election. Um, and uh, it also, like I say, will help to possibly validate, you know, where's, where's this committee's head, uh, at least initially. Two or more, Peter, of, of anywhere in a person's ranking? Sure. Is that what, that's how sure. you count it? Yeah. yeah, two or more. Good. And there were, I think, six. If I was to add anything to it, I guess I would say that I'd probably add uh, property taxes and climate preparedness. Those were also mentioned. They were only ones, which surprises me. Uh, it really surprises me. Um, I'm just going to hand this out real quick. <clears throat> Thank you. Let's just shoot those down. We should just shoot those down. Um, this is on the website. As Sue mentioned, there's a wealth of information that's on there. These are rather large uh, documents. So you can obtain the whole thing on the web website if you, you, you just search it. This is uh, the 2014 Town of Raymond Citizen Survey that Dawn alluded to it at, at a, I think, the last meeting. Um, wow. Uh, when I look at the demographic, to, in, I, I believe you said something in the over 10,000 range in order to, to do this. Yeah, it was uh, the, the bids, if you will, range from, you know, about 12,000 thereabouts to almost 20,000 yeah. and then I was charged with negotiating it down to 10 which I did. Yeah. Good for so, you. Yeah. Uh, yeah so but this is obviously when I read it anyway I've seen a lot of documents and this this is a, a pretty class survey. Uh, also two things that, that's interesting in this survey that I read were that um, at least uh, Pan Atlantic uh, which is the group that conducted it uh, said that, that Raymond was especially for its size, this was an exceptional endeavor, that there aren't a lot of towns that had actually gotten dug this deep into a formal uh, scientific survey of uh, the citizens' mm -hmm. uh, feelings. And um, so that, that struck me. Um, and the second thing was I believe I saw that it was, we, it was above average return. There were over uh, 500 uh, returns. Uh, that being said, there were two surveys to every household, right? One that was online and one that was paper, so yes. you know it was it was a pretty good uh, outreach as well to try and survey the community. Um, so this is dated information. I would certainly encourage everyone to go to the website. I don't, I don't know if this is, you have to send these. They're on the website and they're yeah. all very accessible. I found it no problem, and uh, it it would be well worth your while just to look at it a little bit. But if you look at the second page. Some interesting things as far as what can change and what stays the same over less than a decade. Uh, and so, number one, what's number one on the survey? Taxes. Yeah. There you go. What was interesting to me was that people wanted to keep taxes low, but wanted to expand services and and uh, improve the uh, you know levels of government and uh, and do a lot of other interesting stuff. But they you know valued the, the low tax rate as well. So that's a that's somewhat of a dilemma. But you know, it's something that's manageable. Though you'd have to, you know, do things in a phased way, in an incremental way. But you know, I was struck by that. I was struck by number three, leaving the RSU. Well, things things have a way of changing in a relatively short period of time. I mean, I'm not going to get into a discussion tonight about it. It's just that uh, a lot of things happened between the two towns as far as interactions uh, over that period of time. Uh, but. Uh, an interesting one. Um, any, any other thoughts as we kind of scan this real quick? Just natural resources landing landing in the top five. Yep. And, and we're seeing that tonight. Correct. Uh, I agree. That's a good good point. But yeah, the taxes is the big is the big uh, is the big one that didn't didn't even register on our our little board survey, right? No, absolutely not. 
Number eight is interesting because we talk about housing. And number eight is talking about attracting younger families uh, to provide opportunities for young people. And I think that goes a lot with what we were saying, which was in our top three as well. So it's housing hasn't changed since 2014. It's still important people. No, and I agree with that. You know, as I was looking at, at this and I'm saying, gee, where is housing? I mean, we were all identifying right up in front is, you know, we, we better really uh, attend to, to housing in the community. But I think that that's really buried right in there. It's, it took me a minute to Housing is the root cause, I think. <clears throat> Any other thoughts? Number six is interesting in the context of having the uh, middle school available and how it seems like such a feasible option at Absolutely. this stage now that we've got um, a physical location available. Sure, and that kind of ties in with number nine, I would say, mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm struck also by the number of things on here that actually happened. You know, the infrastructure was improved. We, we defeated Milfoil. Um, you know, so let's see, um, open space, you know, the Pismai Mountain Preserve, not town, but some additional hundreds of acres and additions to the Morgan Meadows. So, so um, you know, that all happened and uh, attracting young families, not so much. Uh, controlling growth, um, I'll, I don't know about that either, but, but there are many uh, things that I think happened and so it's not, um, Maybe not. Maybe some of those things are not as urgent as they were then. I mean, certainly the infrastructure, the road system has come a long way. I would agree with we that. We put a lot of money in that. Absolutely, and it 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 it, um, it was high on the on the uh, the list as far as the review. And we've kept taxes low, relatively speaking. Correct. Which I guess says you achieve you number can, one. You can achieve <laughs> these things. I yeah. should say that because that always seems to be the top the top goal. So if there's no other discussion, I'd just say that this might be something uh, of a document that uh, when you look at it, it, it gives you some idea or meets, it gave me a great idea of just what's involved in a comprehensive survey. Um, uh, I don't know that we'll be commissioning something to this degree, uh, unless it was something that would, you know, I mean, it's, it's part of the town, so, you know, if it's, it, it's something that is, is expensive to do. Yeah, on that score, I mean, it's something you could request. I mean, you're going to have to build a budget and decide what you want to do. And this was something I wanted to do for a long time, and I think Pat Murphy did a great job on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was really a bridge between a 10-year-old a comp plan in 2014 and a, 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 an update for it, a pretty cost-effective one, an informative one. There's still good data in there. So you could look at what, it, what, the, what was happening in 04. Normally, comp plans are done on a 10-year cycle. So here's 10 years. Yeah. <clears throat> and now you're almost 10 years again. So I think, you know, Peter's right. It's instructive. It, it would tell you what people were thinking 10 years after the original plan. And how things change. And yeah. you look at the original plan, right? Yeah. It seems like a, I, I've been thinking about the town, town meeting board sticker or, you know, stop for a, an opinion. Um, I, I don't, I'm not saying it's not a good idea, and there's, there's probably a version of it that would be would be effective in guiding us. Um, but you know, given the con content and the amount of material in a comprehensive survey, uh, it, it might be hard to get anything really meaningful at town at town meeting. You know, that was brief enough to have folks participate in, and uh, and you know, simple enough to understand and and achieve it as folks are walking out. It would be a relatively small sample, we fair to say, how many how many folks coming through at um, I mean at, at voting? Probably about two thousand. Two thousand coming through. Half <laughs> half the half the voters, maybe a little more than that. Mm -hmm. And so we might see ten percent of them stop? I'm not sure. Not half what of did them. you see for the blacksmith shop? Uh, we had about twenty. Yeah. Twenty percent? Mm hmm. And, 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 and I believe Recycling Committee did something similar mm -hmm. um, at the election, and uh, I believe there was something like 40 or 50 signatures to sign up for recycling mm -hmm. barrels. So absolutely, I think all of these um, attempts short of, uh, you know, this type of a, of a thing uh, is, is, is not going to be uh, totally comprehensive. I was thinking in part just looking at this, that a lot of the demographic data we're going to be acquiring anyway. 
we're going to be acquiring it for the plan. Mm -hmm. So that at some point, um, marrying the two uh, somehow would, would be expedient a little bit, maybe a little cost effective since we're doing it. Uh, to get collect all that demographic data that we are going to do for this comprehensive plan, if we let it sit three or four or five years, then it's not, not relevant anymore. Right. right. So, uh, and then lastly, I, my sense was, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, it, it, this is kind of, kind of, we were looking at this as the opening salvo. This was, hey, we're here, I know we're yeah. going to do it in other ways, we're going to put it on electric signs, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to have uh, handouts uh, at uh, the town hall and other things that I believe we're going to discuss. We might have jumped a little ahead in the agenda, but uh, <coughs> we were, we were going to uh, do these things in order to get that initial salvo up to, to kind of engage people. Uh, I believe, as, as Brad was talking about at the at the last meeting, um, that we want this to be uh, a, a community committee. You know, th th it's got to be more than we're going to get a cursory input from them. What we want to do is really know what the community wants, and by that, I guess it means, you know, a sampling of it. Hopefully the larger the sampling, the better. But that's all we're gonna get. Um, everybody that can vote in this community doesn't vote, so that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I, so if there's no further discussion on, on uh, basically just th this, this item, uh, as far as the survey can, is concerned, um, how about uh, what if we were to put together a quick eight or ten items for the um, for the for the uh, November elections, where we had something that was really quick, and this is where it, between now and uh, then we would have to you know put in a certain amount of work in designing it, because certainly we don't we don't want to try and design it tonight. Uh, but but basically, if there was a like subcommittee or something that wants to get together. Uh, to look at something in the next couple of weeks that could be put together. Uh, I personally like the idea of the quick sticker thing, and uh, but what we'd need to know, and also I believe what was mentioned was that there would be uh, some sort of uh, a notice along with it saying, you know, this is just the beginning, folks. This is Raymond's future, folks. Uh, get engaged, expect more from us, we're going to be reaching out to you. So it's a quick even if they, they don't stop to put a sticker on a board, if they just see something on a board that's printed mm -hmm. with that message, then it's, oh, you know, it's, it's just another form of getting the word out. It's, it, would, it would help frame the, uh, perhaps inform the RFP, too, assuming that the RFP mm -hmm. isn't going to go out before then, which it, I would be surprised if we yeah, did. Yeah, but I'd be surprised if it would. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so if you had all four, 15 of these items on the board and everyone gets three, you know, a red, a green, and a yellow sticker, uh, um, or something like that, mm -hmm. and and they put them under, they vote their money, mm -hmm. so um, they vote their stickers. Mm -hmm. I was kind of because I was thinking, how are we going to do this? And some of what we think are our priorities are sort of more exact, and we need to kind of think on a whole level. So I was thinking just the same idea where we have like a one, two, and three. So your first priority is maybe green, and you know whatever color. And we have broad categories, and I was maybe thinking of sticking with what the comprehensive plan laid them out. Wasn't that like um, natural resources was one of the major categories, just to get a general idea of where people are falling. Yeah, I'm trying you know, to think of the other, I yeah. can't think of off the top of my head right now, but it was like what, municipal services or... Um, yeah, I, I, I believe we've done that. And like I say, I believe we've done that. Yeah. We, we captured six. Yeah. And, and I just suggested two more, taxation and... Uh, and the, yeah. the challenge is going to be to get something that is simple enough and quick enough for people to do because they come out of there fairly quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like the idea of the stickers, but I don't know if that's going to be logistically. You know, you're there, you're thinking, you're putting stickers on. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know if that works or not. I'd ask Sue, you know, but the, the flow and go of people is at times going to be... You know, you fairly can, I sure. drop yes. something in a jar. Mm -hmm. and, and then alternatives, like mm -hmm. you could hand... Stop. Something that would be easy enough to do and an alternative to, you know, to drop it off at the town office or something so people didn't have the time. And then I think there also has to be a category, I mean, as, as well as we've, I guess, presaged what might be the issues for other, something we don't have. Those are just my, my general sure. thoughts. So it has to be simple to do, sure. and, and it has to give them an opportunity for something else beyond what we have, I think. And, and with the flow, if you're going to have them, like Don said, standing there kind of deciding, oh, do I want to put it here, do I want to put it there, you might almost need 
one on either side of the aisle going out so that mm -hmm. more than one person can be doing it. Yeah. So that you are. So I just I read down the the, the mm -hmm. uh, basically the categories I used in order mm -hmm. to calculate w what this committee was saying: housing, um, town services, water quality, natural resources, land use, transportation, recreation. I, I mean I, I I read that in less than thirty seconds. I'm sure. So I'm just wondering, is that, is that too general? I'd like some feedback. Is that too general if you were doing an exit so. thing? And, and you said, you know, oh, uh, I think it's, you know, my three top three are housing, transportation, and recreation. Well, I think that's perfect because mm -hmm. you're not, it's not quick if you're having to read through 20 different options. Sure. Yeah. I guess I, I'm, I'm high, I have a hard time letting go of the fact that what I'd really like to get personally is some mm -hmm. feedback from the community early on mm -hmm. as to, you know, are, yeah. we, are we even on the right base or not? I, 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 I'm pr probably pretty convinced we are given those very general, you know, and certainly it's got to go with the disclaimer. Mm -hmm. It's clear that, you know, this is just the preliminary survey and, uh, you know, we're going to get a more comprehensive survey to you. Brad had his hands. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Brad. Yeah, just, just a quick question for Don or Sue. Do we have a, a, a community email like compplan at raymond.org or anything that we could, if we don't have one, could we set something up that's relatively simple that can go to the committee co-chairs or someone? Yes. Yes, we can do that easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just something that's easy to remember, easy to spell for people mm -hmm. who can't, you know, whatever. Something really simple. And if we can get that out with this survey, then the people who can't take time, look, just take this with you, take a look at it. You can email back to us or questions. But I, can, I think it would be great to start publicizing that. Any other thoughts? I guess what I'd ask Sue is this, mm -hmm. because because I'm just estimating. Mm -hmm. um, if we were to do something at the next um, uh, election, mm -hmm. um, how much how, how, how much uh, for notice does the town need to do that? Um, since I don't have any staff that can do anything with it, you can just walk in that morning and be fine as long as you have people to do it. All right. So we're not up against the deadline as far as the town's concerned. No, not at all. Right, okay. Um, it would be nice to know. A little bit early and I set up the night before uh, from we all go into the gym at three o'clock to set up so it'd be nice to know how big your stuff is I already have two or three petitioners that are going that are going to be there so I'd need to know do you need a table do you need some chairs that's that kind of logistical stuff is all I would need okay thank you <laughs> yeah and the other thing that I've made myself a note for I'm going to put a link to the 2014 survey on the comp plan page, so you can go there and get Terrific. it. Terrific. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, where, would, where would the board like to go with this? As far as, I, I guess I'd mm -hmm. define it to the, uh, the election. I like the list that you had created. Um, I'd be interested to see if we could just add one more, though. I'm curious about how people feel about developing the business district. Do people want to see more business in Raymond or do they want to keep that out of Raymond? I'd be interested to know what the consensus on that is. Sure. Uh, can I interject here from mm -hmm. Zoom? Um, I'm wondering too if we, you know, I imagine that there may be a handful of voters that would want to stop and talk with us a little bit more about um, what's going on and what we're doing. And um, I wonder if there's maybe include a, a detailed page or a printout or something that we can hand out and we can chat and have a conversation with those that actually want to stop and talk about it with us. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You were surprised on the sustainability. I was surprised on broadband. You know, we're working really hard, and I know that's your thing too. Absolutely. And uh, I think that's uh, essential for the future. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, so, you know, but I don't know how, how to get at that. It wasn't something that the committee thought, I guess, was as high. And we, we really need to, I think, demonstrate if we're going to get grant funding that it's a, an important thing to the community yeah. somehow. I agree, Don. And I think in, when I reviewed basically answers from, from the committee, 
I, I saw a lot of that probably in uh, either infrastructure or public services. Okay. That sort of a thing. So it, it's in there. It's just, like I say, sometimes it's easy to get extracted from it because there's such broad categories. And, and I was looking at it in the eye, in a, as an eye as far as keeping it as small and quick as possible. Yeah, I mean, it might be helpful if there's, if we have whatever, there's 10, there's 10 chapters in the comp, in the, in the 2004 <coughs> And there's, um, would you have, Peter, seven, six? I, I think, well, you know, I, it's up to about eight or nine now. I've got eight. So, but so I maybe you have, one. maybe you have broad categories. A couple of pull-ups under. You have a little more detail. Yeah, yeah. but sure. what each one kind of covers. Includes, you know, one yeah. word. Trans it, it services it is includes broadband. Yep. Um, and and or infrastructure would also include that. Or maybe it better mm -hmm. fits better under infrastructure. Yep. So how, how would the committee like to go do, is this something that uh, we would look at a subcommittee kind of getting together and just uh, putting something like that together? I think that makes the most sense. Okay. Can I ask for some volunteers? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Frank. What are, what are the volunteers for? Uh, it would be for a subcommittee to draft. Oh. Yeah. Yep. So three would that do? Okay. Sure. That's and and I guess your charge would be to get together. Certainly electronically would be the easiest way. Um, look at the the uh, I would say look at the meeting minutes and uh, what we've discussed and um, you know decide you know what format you'd want to um, uh, present it to or. I think I've read several formats. There would be a handout, and there would also be a possibly a board for scoring. Um, terrific format and content. Yeah. One of the things we did at the uh, with Pat Murphy and Pan Atlantic was to make it available in different ways. So that's a, that's something I remember as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and one of the options could be to put it on our website because Kevin can do sure. can create the same yeah. type of survey there if you wanted to give them. I feel like we would yeah. want to do something more comprehensive yeah. at a later time, though. Oh, yeah. I think maybe the purpose of this is just an initial snapshot. First brush. Mm -hmm. yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I, think, I think what I saw is that at the, one of the previous minutes, um, uh, Sue, what you mm -hmm. would include was um, a preliminary uh, community survey at the election on the town website in the October Roadrunner at town office and advertise on the Facebook page and the electronic sign. Yes, so we can do all of those things. Whether you want to with this first go or not is really up to you. So I throw that to the subcommittee as well yeah. if you're working and, on it. And I'm sorry, I missed the members of the subcommittee. So oh. I got Brad and who? Dan Frank. 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 And, okay, thank you. Could I suggest maybe one of the co-chairs be there also on that? Oh, Just to keep us straight. <laughs> Terrific. Very good. So if there's no further discussion on uh, that. Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, if, if I could, and I'm, I'm not sure if you want to do this, but it is a suggestion. We do have two people here that are uh, joining us from one from the state, one from St. Joseph's College, and in the interest of not having them sit through some of our tediousness. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah, that unanimous would... consent to, to uh, change the order of the agenda without oh. exception. Oh, yeah. I agree. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we, who, do we, who do we have? We have Tom, and I'm sorry, Tom, I know I will mess your surname up if I try it. Miraglinolo. That's fine. Tom M. That's fine. That works. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah. No, yeah. No problem. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I'll I, I'll just kind of spiel for a minute here, and then I guess the best thing is just open it up for questions. I don't know mm -hmm. what order you'd like to take things. Um, typically, um, normally, what I'm doing now, I just want to make sure: is there anyone from GP Cog in the in the meeting now or no? The I town, think no, the town right? of Raymond is not a member of GP Cog. I, I, I understand oh, that. Okay. So so we pay GP Cog uh, forty five thousand dollars a year to do 
this. <laughs> and so they're, they're typically the contact, whether you pay dues or you're a member or not. Um, and you know, an example, you know, that's very common for everyone doesn't pay dues to their regional council. That's common, but we we fund the regional councils. Um, GPCOG does tend to be less active. I, I understand that. Um, and other councils are much more active. But just letting you know, it is a resource out there, um, uh, you know, for you. It's supposed to be there for you. Um, uh, and so this is the type of, like, uh, they've been working on Long Island's plan for years. I, I don't even think Long Island gave them a penny. Um, uh, years, it's now in my hands. But, um, you know, that's, that's uh, a, a, re a resource. Um, and uh, so anyway, so I just want to double check to see sort of where they are. I was looking at your last, uh, uh, well, Sue, the material you just sent me a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. the PDF that had, um, uh, you know, the agenda and stuff. I, I just mm -hmm. scrolled through it while you guys were talking. Um, and I just saw like Rich Rothy on the last plan and stuff. And it just, you know, it was good to see some of those names were in the mix. Just hoping, <laughs> I don't know if maybe they were back this time. That's all. <laughs> Oh, um, so, yeah. so just a quick there. background. Um, again, Tom Mariola from DACF, Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. I've been around doing this in one form or another for 23 years or so. Um, and uh, I was at the state planning office um, in sort of the Evan Rickert days back in the King administration. Um, and uh, I've been the sole reviewer of comp plans for few years now. Um, so I review plans for the state, statewide. Um, and uh, uh, I'm just trying to think what we want to cover. So um, I also do the data sets. So when I say I do the data sets, so what that is, is, and I've done that on and off pretty much since 2006 or five or so. Um, the intent of the comp plan review criteria rule. So I noticed in those in the minutes that I got from Sue, towards the back there was a, the statute, uh, part, a portion of the Growth Management Act, which is great and helpful. It might be a little high level for the committee. I usually say when I t when I talk to a chair, I say the chair needs to know that, right? <laughs> or, or 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 the CEO or something, right? Town manager, but. Um, one step below the statute is the comp plan review criteria rule. And I apologize, you may have gone over some of this. Um, that's, that's chapter 208. Um, and so that is the rule that the state that I use to review comp plans. And so that's what you're going to want to have sort of in your pocket as you're um, drafting this. Um, it also lays out the, the, the process, sort of like what do I do when, what do you do when, you know that that type of thing. How do you appeal it? You know that that kind of thing. Um, and then one step. And then I, I I don't even think the committee even needs the rule. I mean it's you know it's good to know it's there and get get a get a copy of it. Um, but I think when you start actually writing the comp plan um, and reviewing sections, the checklist, which I'm I'm assuming most of you have seen, that is. A copy and paste from the rule. Sort I call it the cliff notes. It's kind of like the cliff notes of the rule, and it's it boils it down to <coughs> something less than 20 pages. And it's um, it's what I use. I keep a stack of them right next to me here. I, I was using one this morning. That's what I use when I review a plan. So it's just uh, running through a list of what's required. Um, and um, I don't want to get too in the weeds. Just tell me how deep you want to get here. But when it comes to requirements, there are the way the rules written is like they're black and white. There's you know this is what's required and that's it, right? Well, after doing this for some time, there always is this sort of in between gray area, and you have to use some judgment. Um, no plan, almost no plan, ever covers every one of those items. I mean, there's 20 pages. Of it's probably I don't even never counted. 200, 250 items, right, that, 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 I, that I look for. And so some of those things just aren't going to matter. You know, your cargo port, how big is your cargo port, right? It, it's just not, it's not something that's going to apply. There may be a train terminal or something, you know, it's just things that may not apply to most towns. Um, and they're pretty obvious when you come across them. And then there'll be items where um, maybe they're not statutorily required because many of the, some of those items are statutorily required. If they're statutorily required, um, I'm going to kick them back to you. So I was reviewing Rockland this morning. I think I found three things. I found four total things, three of which, three of which were, in, were in statute. 
that they must be in a comp plan that's found consistent. So try to focus on those. So there's, there's not many one or two or three or four things that are probably going to hang you up, but there are sort of like more important ones. And that's where an experience might come in with a consultant. Um, uh, and you have the checklist right on our website, and you can do your own review. And I'd say two thirds of the plans I get, they've already completed that checklist to the best they can, you know, and which is makes a good case for a consistent plan. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting things. You guys want to talk about timelines, or wh wh where would you like to take this? Well, Tom, I've, I've got a question in uh, in the agenda later on. What we're going to be doing is looking at the. Uh, the town draft uh, of an RFP for a, a contract planner. Um, and so we'll be looking at the elements. Uh, it looked pretty comprehensive to me, but we'll be reviewing that. Uh, so we, we definitely are planning on, on engaging a contract planner. Um, okay, that's, I quickly looked at that just as you guys were talking about minutes, I think. Yeah. Um, and um, the only thing that jumped out that, that I that is very commonly forgotten that I to me it kind of always can I see it sometimes it burn towns in the end is if I was to spend public funds to hire someone to do a job no matter well I don't care if you're plowing roads or cutting trees or doing a comp plan I would want them to have done one before right and so I mean and you can sort that out when they come in obviously you can look at their experience but. I would want someone that has done a plan in Maine in the last, say, 12 years, something like that. Um, I only say in Maine, and I'll give an example. Just I think this will hit hit home. Um, if you if you looked at our website now, you'll see Kennebunkport is on my list. Um, I don't know; it's probably fourth in line to get reviewed. And so Kennebunkport um, went out to bid, and they hired a consultant for a $360,000 contract. And mind you, when they hired them, this is 2019, the average, the average comprehensive plan contract for a consultant was probably in the 23 to 35,000 range, you know, in, on average, you know, there were some higher and some lower. And uh, you know, there, there wasn't, it wasn't unheard of to get an $18,000 contract on a comp plan, right? I mean, it doesn't happen anymore, but, um, and so when you see a 360, you know, it just blows your mind. It was just over the, over the top. I mean, the entire counties combined are, are at that amount. And so when I, I, I didn't even know what one was selected yet. I, I, I just knew the RFP was out there. I knew it was a big budget. You know, I, I don't follow that closely. And then I get a call from that consultant. <laughs> and the, phone, the question is, okay, now what do I do, right? <laughs> Never done a plan in Maine, right? I mean, I, mind you, the plan has come in. I haven't reviewed it yet, but I, you know, I looked at it. It's, it's $360,000. It's a phenomenal plan. Um, but I, I haven't read it yet, but it's, 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 uh, it's over the top. Um, uh, and our, our minimum criteria is pretty low. It's a, very, it's a low bar. I think in most people's opinions, it's a pretty low bar. Um, but w when you hire someone that has never done a comp plan before, you want them to have done a comp plan that is in line with the intent, which would be to meet the minimum requirements, the, the low bar. Um, and so you might get someone that's done a plan in another state, and they might come in with the same understanding of, of the criteria, but our, I don't know what other states' criteria is, but I guarantee it's not the same. So I have, I, I will see good consultants that will come in, and they'll, they'll, they'll do a, a, a a, a nice plan. It just doesn't. It was never. There was never any intent to meet that minimum criteria. So they find themselves having spent a lot of time, two years, and, and fifty grand, and they have something that's 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 not close. And I, I was on a phone call with Newcastle this morning. They did exactly that. They've now hired their regional council, and the regional council just connected with me today to to let me know they've been hired and you know make that connection. Um, but they're they're on a on a like a cleanup mission basically, after they'd hired a consultant that had never done a comp plan. Yeah. Don't we're not going to spend 300000 and we're <laughs> going to get somebody who has experience. Uh, I've been doing this for a while. I, I hired Evan Rickert when he first got into the business, so uh, we're going to be okay on that point. And that's the town manager. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, we know what we're doing. 
Gotcha. Uh, Tom, could you answer this for me? In, in reviewing the uh, the RFP and the statute as well, and, and it sounds like this checklist would help a lot as far as looking at, uh, as you allude to, what is and what is not uh, statute. Um, but I came across something that I was unsure about. Um, in, in the uh, the RFP, it states, in our draft RFP, it states that the consultant's work will result in the plan consistent with Growth Management Act of the State of Maine. That being said, further down, it has kind of a, uh, one of the tasks of the contract planner is uh, uh, to uh, basically, uh, the, the uh, consultant will assess how the consistency with the state statute might support yeah. or hinder the proposed goals and policies of the town. So it seemed to me those were, were kind of in conflict, unless you can describe for me, is it in the growth management uh, plan where the, there's the section on addressing conflicts where the town planner and the committee actually state their case for, let's say, why we aren't able to do 10% affordable housing in all new projects? Yeah. Um, in some cases, possibly. The example you use about 10% affordable housing um, that's in statute that has to be in a plan no matter what. So that, that, that's like the, probably the biggest red, red light just because it's, it's, it's specific in statute. Um, but in uh, other cases, let's say, I think I heard the question right. Let's say there's um, oh, something I sometimes will get will be like forestry, you know, for, forestry. Um, and, and this was a re this was in Scarborough, you know, and, 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 and the plan was silent on forestry in Scarborough. Um, and so uh, Scarborough has commercial forests in there and they have uh, timber harvest data and the main, and we provided as part of our data sets, the data sets that we compile, we provided their harvest data. So it showed how many acres of softwood, hardwood, you know, were, were harvested in town. And so it was like, well, you know, <laughs> you, you know, you can't be silent on it. Um, it. It is existing. There is that activity going on. You had more harvesting than a lot of other towns had, a lot of smaller towns, honestly. But um, and so, you know, I think that's what you're saying. Like, it, can a, a consultant can certainly a, any comp plan can make a case for why a particular criteria doesn't apply to them. So there is something not applicable. Like that, that is something that exists. So you certainly can do that. Is that what you were getting at? Yeah, I, b I believe that that's what was described in the draft RFP that, that I read. Yeah. Was the fact that's that that would be the responsibility uh, of the contract planner to basically yeah. look at what we're saying and, and, or what we're asking for and the, 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 then providing guidance as far as, well, that's, that's not really something that the town it is in line with the town's yeah. goals. Yeah, and, and if it's I, kind of touching on the same thing, which I thought you might have said when you, when you first started the question, I thought you were going was if, if it's important to the town that it be consistent with the Growth Management Act, if this is, this is an ultimate goal, then I would, I would write right in the contract. It, it may not have to be in the RFP necessarily, but usually RFPs mimic the contract, or vice versa, the contract mimics the RFP, but um, you might want them to um, complete the checklist before, before you pay them that last payment. Um, uh, Again, this experience, this is the town of Georgetown. They made final payment, and the consultant had never considered the criteria as being reviewed under. And, and I'd done that list of 250 items, and there was, you know, 150 missing, right? Um, and so, and they'd already paid, and the consultant was out of their hair, right? I mean, it was paid. So I, I, a final task may be something like um, when it's getting ready to get submitted to the state that, that they complete that checklist for your own use, just so you know that. If that's the intent, is that the town wants to meet the minimum criteria, then, then I would think they would be able to do that. I don't think that's asking too much. I mean, especially, you know, when you're, when you're reviewing a chapter, you know, some of the, some, some chapters have 15 things that, are, that we're looking for, right? And, and most of them, they're gonna catch just by accident. I mean, honestly, they're, they're kind of like, I call them like mom and apple pie things, where it's like things that you're just gonna, you're, you're gonna talk about traffic, you're gonna talk about, you know, you know the, the lakes or water quality they're just things you're going to catch anyway um so you know sometimes those consultants catch them by accident and they and they didn't do it on they didn't do it purposely which is fine but sometimes when you're not looking at the whole criteria you miss some so other questions from the committee for tom great info um i i 
can talk about just the process real quick. I mean, I'm just it's really sure. quick. So I think when Brad, a plan Brad has a question. Go Brad. Oops, you're muted, Brad. You're muted. Just, just wondering, your experience is wonderful, and you're not, you're not here to sell us anything, which is even better. Um, can you give us a timeline of, of, of what, what goes into the different timelines that it takes different communities? For example, yeah. would a city like Portland take longer than Raymond because it has more to do, or would it be sooner because it has more resources to do all of that? What, what goes into what takes and how long should a plan for a community yeah. like Raymond take us? Yeah, I, I would have a goal of having it complete in 18 months. Um, that'd be a goal. I, and I say that kind of for two reasons. One, and if you have a consultant, it's expensive. So if you drag this out, it's just going to get more expensive. And so, and having a consultant can hurry things up for that reason. So the consultant wants to get done and they want to move on to their next project. So that, no question, can help. Um, the and if you start if you have volunteer committees and they're dragging over in that 18 month range they're going to burn out the turnover might increase um, i usually encourage towns to start with more volunteers than you think you need <laughs> you know if you want eight if you want six start with eight or ten and and then you know expect a, attrition to happen um, you don't you know you might find yourselves in 18 months bringing on four new members that don't like the direction or what's a comp plan or why are we doing this or and then you kind of find yourself repeating things <laughs> and then you lose the more experienced volunteers then fall off because here we are again right um that'd be my so 18 months would be the goal i would shoot for if i was to write a contract you put, you know ideally it would be in that range um it has been done quicker um by, by volunteer communities that usually are purposely, they're purpose built. You know, these are committees that uh, when projects come to town and, you know, they want to organize. They're, maybe they're a, they're a Lutzi town, they're not an organized town and they want to organize. You know, one of the things of organizing is doing your own enforcement, having your own, you know, th there's a process. So, you know, I've seen them come in and they'll, and they'll do a comp plan in six months, right? I mean, there's the case I'm thinking of, there's 26 residents of the town. So, you know, they just, they just did it themselves quickly. Um, but does that get at it, Bob, uh, Brad? Uh, just yeah, you know, one follow up here is um, tell me tell me what eighteen months is. Is that having approval from the town, or is it ready to go to the town? Or that, you know, it's all over. So I mean, you know, I could use the t cases of my own town. I was the chair of my planning board, and and I I you know, had my own town. I mean, ours ours went closer to well, maybe a little closer to two years, but. Probably the slowest part of, of my town's process was the state review. <laughs> so, okay. and, and you know, and, and not, I'm not necessarily blaming myself, but um, um, the last two times my town has submitted a plan, or I've submitted a plan to myself, it, 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 I, I, I have to go find somebody else that never reviews comp plans to review it, right? Just so there wasn't a conflict of interest. And so they don't know how to do it, they get confused, and then I end up doing a draft for them, giving it to them, and then, then they disagree with what I thought of my own plan. And so, you know, um, and the, yeah, you know, who, so, you know, it's gonna be all over the place. Um, uh, it, you know, it's just sort of the time for me, you know, I think that goes, that's kind of a given. I, you know, no one's gonna think three years out, no one's gonna think six months out, I don't think. So it's kind of a, a safe ground, it's a goal. Um, you know, once you have a contractor on board, it's looked like on your schedule, you're talking about early spring, late winter, having a contractor potentially. Um, and so if you set that contract at something, something, I don't know, it kind of depends where you stand um, and, and if you, where, where you are and, you know, who's doing the mapping and, you know, um, if your public out, out, outreach is complete or almost complete, or if you're going to do a, you know, but it, I don't know. It, it, that contract could be 16 months. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. When it, when it come, once it's once the town has a complete copy, um, and 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 you're 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 happy with it, depending on the way your your ordinance is set up, it, the planning board may have to look at it, the select board. Um, but we chip tip typically. There's a submittal form. You'll have the chief elected official sign it. You'll have the chair of the comprehensive planning committee sign it. You'll submit to the state a, a one PDF of the whole plan. You'll submit one hard copy, and then when it lands on my desk on a typical year, and this, this year has not been typical, 
but every year prior has been for 20 plus years we've never we don't we don't miss deadlines normally though i did look in 2004 there was a delay in your review it looks like two months or something but um uh typically it comes in when it comes into our desk I, I send out the public comment. I send I, I send out notification to all your budding communities. I send out notification to about 11 state agencies for public comment, um, and then and your regional council gets cc'd on everything. And then it goes out. There's 25 days for 25 business days for me to receive public comment. I typically don't get any public comments. Um, I'll typically just get comments from the state agencies, which are technically our public comments, um, and then. Uh, after that 25 days, I review. I, re, I then I then have 10 days to review it for completeness. That is basically saying every part of the plan is consistent with the uh, up up to and not including the future land use plan. We review. I review that. I have 10 days to review that, and then assuming the future land use plan. I'm sorry. Assuming that is all consistent, then I move on. I have 10 additional days to review the future land use plan. Typically, I squish that down into the 25 plus 10, so it's 35 business days. So what's that? Seven, eight weeks. Uh, so you're look, looking at like a two-month state review. Um, like I said, this year is not typical. I, I think I have something like ten in the pipeline on my desk now. I usually have two or something. So there is a wait. I'm probably almost two months behind right now on on reviews. At what should point, it, Tom, it, does the town have to adopt it? I would assume after you've approved it. So it can happen either way, um, it, it, either way. So um, uh, it's, al it's almost 50-50, um, but I'll tell you, no question about it. It's a much easier to have it reviewed by me than to, if, it's re if you send it to me first, it's, it's me. It's a guy sitting in his dining room reviewing your plan. It's simple, it's me and you, right? And, and there's, it's, not a, it's not a bureaucracy. It's just me and where you are in line. So it's very easy. If there's something missing, um, if I tip, a typical review is like I did with Rockland. I, I pick back four things, these four things. I bet they'll respond this week on those four items. Um, so it's very easy and, and um, uh, flexible. I, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but um, um, we can, it's easy to work with, with me. I, we can just, OK, these four are missing. I just got an email from the chair, and, and here's a, here he has the four, or he's saying he will put them on page 55, and, and then I can write that consistency letter, and you can vote on it. If you do it the other way, you're going to have to have the, the statu statutorily required public hearing. So you're going to have a public hearing on the, on the vote, right, and 30 days prior. And then you're going to have the, the public hearing, you're going to have the vote, the notifications, right? You see where I'm going, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to go out. It's going to get voted on. Maybe you're standing up. The chair's up in the gym talking about how great the plan is and trying to get, get trying to get the votes at a town meeting. And then it gets it gets approved. And then two months later, you're like, ah, crap! It's missing three things, right? Mm -hmm. And it would have taken ten minutes to just insert those things, right? Just an example, right? And so it's a lot. It, that way, you kind of have egg on your face. And here we are, six months later, going back to November election or something. Mm -hmm on the comp plan when the town just voted on it. Now they have to vote on it again because you changed something, right? Does that make sense? Yes. OK. Well, the other side of that is what if, what, what if the uh, uh, town votes down sections of it after you've approved it? No, we'll vote it as a whole. Doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you could. I mean, you could come back after the vote with an. an a, you can come back again and again and again. I can't stop you from bringing mm -hmm. different drafts to me. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems to me. My recollection is we had some challenges Sue, last time around, and uh, at when we came to the town. Is that your yeah, the, recollection, the, John? Yeah, but it <laughs> but it passed. I mean, we yeah. we didn't have to make revisions, or perhaps we we did, but it it passed the one time it came to town meeting for a vote. Was my recollection? The, that's what the minutes show. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the town meeting was a different thing then too. Mm -hmm. Presumably, if you have enough public hearings and enough opportunity for people who are interested to have input, they're going to know about it. They're going to have an opinion about it. You will have addressed somehow the concerns. We don't get hundreds of people at town meeting anymore. Right. It's a different environment. Mm -hmm. this, it's a different population. I, I think it'll be completely different than, than the two, 2004, which passed, as I recall, pretty easily. Yeah. 
Other committee questions for Tom? Tom, very informative. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you. I get the sense that, that probably won't this won't be the last time we're talking to you, but we do appreciate you. you no being problem. Here. And I'm available for questions. Okay. Um, Sue has my email. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just, just zip questions all the time. That's fine. Great. Very thank good. you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank no problem. You. Thank you, guys. Excellent. Um, and the other person we have is McKenna Smith from St. Joseph College. And um, she was asked to talk about what interns might be able to do for us or what possibilities there may be there. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Love to hear from you. Thank you for having me. Um, I apologize if I talk fast. I'm from the South, but the one northern thing about me is I talk really fast. So you are welcome to ask me to slow down. Um, my name is McKenna Smith. I'm a new graduate assistant for the Mercy Center here at St. Joe's. And one of my duties is to hire student workers who work with different organizations in the community who help run service projects. Um, one of those things that we're talking about that could happen with that is we could hire them to be an intern for you guys. So that way, if you need help with your office, they would come in about four hours a week and do what you need. You would use them for how you would need them, um, but they would be hired through our office. Great. Very good. I, I, I didn't think you talked too fast. The only <laughs> thing I didn't catch was your first name. McKenna Smith. Well, my first name is McKenna. McKenna. Okay. Um, questions for McKenna? So McKenna, would, would presumably if we got a planner on board and made some note of it in our RFP to the planner um, that we hired, and they had a bunch of natural resource information to collect from the state of Maine or, or whatever traffic information from DOT. Your intern could assist with that if our planner was agreeable? Yeah. Um, the way that we see the program working is however the organizations need the students to be used. And as long as they can be, that work can be done within four hours a week, um, that's totally fine with us. It's to create community involvement with our students. Done. I, I think it's a great idea. The question that I have, though, is I'm unfamiliar with the curriculum offerings of St. Joseph's. I know my alma mater no longer has public administration due to lack of interest, I guess. But uh, I'm wondering if you have congruent, you know, fields of study majors that would, you know, dovetail what we're doing. So, because it would be important to have someone not only um, for their own experience, but, you know, f for efficiency and, and uh, you know, added value for us, someone who is studying something pretty directly related to what we're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So St. Joe's just created a new major, and let me find it so I can make sure I get the name of the program right. I believe it's Leadership and Sustainability, um, and there are four different tracks with it. Um, and those tracks include politics, which I think would fit right in with what you guys do. There's one that's a science route. Um, there's a public health public health course as well. So I think there are options and ways that we could recruit from. That sounds good. Thank mm -hmm. you. Excellent. Other questions from McKenna? W would it be possible to have m more than one intern if we had, seeing that we have eight to 10 chapters to cover in our upcoming comp plan? Uh, it might well <coughs> be that we need, need more than one intern to have the expertise that would line up with that chapter. Yeah, I would need to double check with my boss on that one. Um, I don't see that being an issue. It's more of the issue of can I hire the students because unfortunately our students are stretched thin as it is, so I want to make sure I can get you at least one. <laughs> can you uh, go over the four hours? I kind of missed what you said. Four hours a week is the maximum we could use a student for? Yes, so out of our office, about four hours is what we're able to pay per student. So this is, this is different. Normally, um, you know, when I, when I interned in Cape Elizabeth and Scarborough 40 odd years ago, you know, the town, the town paid. So you're saying you pay? Yes, sir. Um, That's so interesting. So our office does a work study program, and so work study students apply through our office for these positions. How can we say no? <laughs> I think it's a great deal, and 
I don't know how it worked out. I hooked you up with Sharon. Are you working with us on the beautification committee? Yes. Great. I have my student worker either started today or tomorrow. I need to follow up and see how that went. I think it's great. Yes. Would it be possible to hire the intern for more hours on our dime? <clears throat> I can double check. Um, I don't see that being an issue, but I'm also new and I want to make sure I get approval before I tell you yes to anything. Okay. Thank you. All right, well, McKenna, we thank you very much. What, what would the next steps be for this committee? Do we need to formally request, or do you get in touch with Sue? Um, I can stay in touch with Sue, and I will make sure, um, I'm, gonna, I'm continuing the hiring process on my end, so I will make sure that our students know that you guys are an option for them to apply to. Terrific. Excellent, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I would thank like you. to make one comment about oh. St. Joseph's while I have you, you know, um, the integration between St. Joseph's and the communities is really exceptional on a, on a lot of levels, and so I want to call that out and thank you, thank the college. I've never seen anything like it, actually. Um, it's really, uh, really something. So, so appreciate thank you. it. Very appreciate it, and you know, we have a lot of a lot of connections. We work together on the broadband. We work together on a, on a lot of local issues. So, very, it's a very good relationship. Thank you. I hope that that continues. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Have a wonderful night. Thank you for having Thank me. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Oh, oh, that was it. That yes. was it. Okay. All right. So, in, re real quickly, under uh, the uh, an update on the uh, the boat and bus tour. Uh, if you could Sue just update us, and maybe we can clarify it for all the members right now. What and if we can do as far as either of those tours? There we are. Um, what I have is a note from uh, Public Safety, and there are two dates that they could do. One is next Thursday in the morning, so that's um, October 13th, or if that wouldn't work, possibly Saturday the 15th. If we go too much after that, it's getting a little bit cold. And this is the boat? This is the boat. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to share as well that I, uh, my offer to captain a boat is no longer uh, off available. The uh, boat club is uh, shut down after the 1st of um, October. So. Sure. Oh, okay. well, well, thank you for the offer anyway, Jackie. You appreciate it. <laughs> will we still need to be able, will, uh, if we all went on one day, would everybody still be able to go on one day, or would we still have to possibly split it up between two days? Well, I don't, I mean, just speaking for myself, mm -hmm. neither of those dates work for me, so there's one other spot on the boat. <laughs> I mean, I just think that um, it's possible that not all of us could attend anyway, but getting an idea of who could attend would let us know that. Mm -hmm. We could probably do both dates, but I think it would be better to do the one date, so pick out the date that works the best, and, you know, that's the one I would do. You know, I can't do the I have a commitment on the weekend of the, the 15th, but I, think I, I don't do need to, well. I don't actually need to to do it. I think it's the committee that needs to do it. The capacity including crew? Uh, ten. Ten. So so I, th I think if you want Saturday that's fine, if you want Thursday that's fine. I mean if we have an overwhelming interest maybe we could do two or we could get an additional boat or a bigger boat somehow. You need a bigger boat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'd be available for both but just to put my availability at 13th so Thursday would be just fine with me. You said 13th? Yeah, yeah I would be able to do both but if I were to pick one. How does that work for everybody else? I think I can do it. Possible. Yeah. Maybe a show of hands. We just get a count. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One, what, two. What time are we talking on Thursday? In the morning. Uh, eleven o'clock or nine o'clock or. Uh, we, we don't. Know? We don't have it that nailed down. <laughs> as early as you want to go. Yeah. <laughs> Between six and noon. Okay. <laughs> and, and it looks like we'd meet. We'd we'd be under the capacity. Uh, just with a show of hands here. Um. Two, two crew? Two crew. Yeah. Two crew. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, should we just uh, follow up with Sue? Or Sue, will you follow up with us as far um, as the time? And we'll, we'll go for the 13th? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Good. Okay. So that I will mm -hmm. Very good. New business. Um, uh, 
I, I think Tom covered a lot of what uh, uh, we would talk about as far as reviewing elements of the growth management plan. Title 38 sounds like uh, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Kayla and I are the only persons that need to understand that. Uh, I don't know if I na necessarily agree with that. You know, sometimes, you know, citizen volunteers get short shift in this. You know, as I look around, I see a, a pretty astute group here. So, um, yes, Frank. Are we still talking about the bus tour? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Oh. Can we go back to the bu bus tour? And the bus tour, uh, Joe had said he could pretty much do it in October at any time. So that's more when you folks are available, but no one sent me in any availability. So. The, the concern I have about that is also one of, you know, how many people are going to go. We have the large school bus, which would not be optimal. I would seek a, a, a minibus or something from the school, from the RSU. So I, I, how many people want to go is important. And Joe did say he might be able to get a, a smaller bus from Raymond, not Raymond Rec, that's us. Uh, Wyndham, Wyndham, Wyndham Rack. Rack. So that's another op opportunity, but I think mm -hmm. a smaller bus is going to be much better. Mm -hmm. So can I just get a show of hands just at first interest in going on the bus tour? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two, two, two. One, two, that's three, everything. four, five, six, seven, really seven, good seven tour of eight. Already. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so that would be eight that would say they would be Right, so, mm -hmm. so we'll work on getting a, a minibus and do we have a, did we get the day? Yeah, We'd have to, you'd have to decide on a, yeah. On a yeah. day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hopefully that wouldn't be a whole day driving around. No, 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 it would be a, <laughs> be a morning or an afternoon, a couple, couple hours. A couple maybe. hours, a couple really hours, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Is it, I don't know if everyone has the calendars with them right now. Uh, if, if not, we could... Uh, maybe email me your availability and I'll see what there is for commonality. Or we could shoot out some dates. Is that what we want to do? Do you want to pick the yeah, dates now? I don't know. The one that's going to be driving said bus. He said it doesn't yes. matter to him. And he said he said oh, he like he's completely open on whatever day and he'll make it time. happen. Mm -hmm. He'll yeah. make it happen. He'll make it happen. Yeah. So how do we want to go about uh, kneeling down the, the date? Do we want to try and, and figure it out now? Pick mm -hmm. a date now. We're all here. All right. Save mm -hmm. the electronic. Yeah, uh, about that. Following Thursday on the twentieth. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'd be. Oh. You're yeah. talking yeah. morning again? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just want to make sure they know. Preferred, but yeah, yeah, that's the well, that's better for me. Yeah. 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 Kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Yep. Not a hat. You were talking about who's going to lead the tour. I was thinking, you know, probably Chris more than more than Don. He's uh, he's out in the town all the time. No yes, and, and on the lake. I know that and on the lake. By experience, yes, I know that yeah. absolutely. So, so we're looking what? at the the twentieth in the morning. I mean, that's I mean, good. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, good for everyone. I, I I will not be available for that, but uh, having been twenty plus years on the zoning board of appeals, uh, <laughs> I've seen a lot of what Chris has seen. <laughs> Very good. All right, let's get that nailed down. Everybody's all set. I don't know if Brad, Brad and Jackie set. heard. Yeah. Well, Brad. Yeah, I. I, I raised part this of hand. it. Yeah, you. Are you, we saying morning of the twentieth, Thursday the twentieth? For, for the bus. bus. Yes. Yeah. Um, are there any alternate dates we could? That's. Um, I have something on the thirteenth that is blocks out the day, but I'll move that. But I need to move it to the twentieth. <laughs> so, <laughs> Murphy's Law. Is there another day? I mean, is a, is a Saturday a possibility for something like that, or for that? How about the twenty-first? That's a Friday. Uh, well, uh, I, it's it's the, the day before that Thursday is preparation till after midnight for something in the morning on the 21st. Ah. <laughs> I still work for a living. I, I don't know about the rest of everybody here. Yeah, I was, I was looking for a reason to skip work in the morning. And <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> does, does the 21st pose a problem? I think that's well, that does it, it does for him. Oh, it does for him. Oh, okay. How about 19 before we bump into the weekend? I'm, I'm in I might propose. Paper. I mean, this isn't like. On the I might lake propose weeks. actually the 18th. The rent. Sorry, go ahead, Brad. I was just going to say, this isn't like going out of the lake, so we could put this off, you know, till the leaves come down. I think 
anyway, like maybe the last week in October or first week in November or something? It's up to you. Yeah, I'd be okay with the last week, last full week of October. 27, Thursday. Uh, that works for me. 26 would be Thanksgiving. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be. No, that's, well, that's, 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 that's November. November. That's, not, that's November, right? <laughs> Don't rush it yet. <laughs> Just waiting for that turkey. I think maybe we need to ask you, Brad, what's your day? 27th works for me. I would get a big thing on the 26th, and that would be a great, great uh, R and R after. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd be good for the 27th. 27 Thursday. If it's in the morning. Morning of the 27th. What are, what are we talking roughly? Three hours here or? Ooh. Two to three, yeah. <laughs> okay. On the two side of three. <laughs> so how does, how does everyone feel about the 27th in the morning? Well, good here. Good. Good here. I may not be able to make it, but I may be able to make it. So okay. just have to check. Thank you. <laughs> All right, then why don't we go with that, the uh, 27th uh, in the morning for the bus trip. Good. Okay. Go ahead. As this is going back to Tom, you know, when he talks about 18 months. I think that's probably reasonable when you talk about the consultant time. It's totally unreasonable when you talk about all do, do municipal speed and trying to get this thing done. I've never seen one done in 18 months that includes the, the ramp up, which we're in now. And then some of the you know closure stuff. Sure. So I, I think the two to three years that sure. we're talking about is more realistic, frankly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was kind of having those same thoughts. I don't, myself. I've never seen one happen that <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Soup to nuts. Maybe his part. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe the consultant part. Sure. Not the whole thing. Yeah. Should we I, add something to the RFP as a goal, or not? Well, I think for the consultant, yeah. that's a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. But once we have, we're going to spend six months before we can yeah. get there, probably. Sure. Mm -hmm. But we do have in there that it's a fixed amount, right? Yeah, so but I don't, I don't understand that Kennebunk, that, that is completely out there. I've never heard of anything like that, ever. I'm going to be applying for Kennebunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess what I, you know, we can talk about this a little bit more. Uh, we're going to talk about the draft RFP and, and certainly incorporate yeah. some of Tom's uh, uh, recommendations or observations as well. Um, but uh, I, I guess reviewing the uh, growth management plan really quickly, although, as I said, it was uh, um, a situation where, you know, it, it may not be that, that everyone needs to be able to digest every word and, uh, you know, whether or not you're comfortable with legalese or, or reading state statute or whatever, I can certainly appreciate Tom's observation there. Um, but that being said, uh, I did prepare a quick, I guess, cheat sheet or a synopsis of uh, Oh. Of the uh, the growth synopsis, uh, a synopsis of the growth management uh, uh, program elements, um, and when, it, when I think when you distill it down, the document down to you know one one page, and you look at it, um, and you just look at the the general part of it, it. At least for me, it gave me an idea of what uh, what elements are necessary uh, that uh, in a comprehensive plan which seemed to mirror a lot of what was in the, uh, the 2004 approved uh, comprehensive plan. Um, uh, so just really quickly, and, and I know everyone can read, but there's this, this four um, sub-chapters. There's inventory and analysis, policy development, uh, implementation strategy, and regional coordination program. And they're very detailed uh, as far as each and every uh, element is concerned, and it, you can get really bogged down in them. But uh, as far as the inventory analysis, I think this committee's now looked at enough as far as plans to understand that a lot of it is demographic and economic information, um, uh, that, that they want to hear about uh, your clean water and what your plans are. Uh, what what uh, significant and critical natural resources there are, uh, the commercial, forestry, and agricultural land, existing recreation, existing transportation, current housing stock, historical and archaeological resources, current and projected development patterns, and assessment of public services to protect health, safety, and welfare. So if you would use that, we would use that as a general outline as to what the state is looking for in a comprehensive plan. I am sure that a, a, a contract consultant is going to be much more detailed in this 
but I believe for, for our level, we, we need to at least have this working framework to understand what the elements the state expects in a, in a comprehensive plan. The second one, policy development, is basically just saying that um, you're going to look at the inventory and uh, the analysis of that inventory and formulate policies that promote um, uh, what you've identified as uh, important issues for the town. Implementation strategy. And that really is, uh, you know, we're looking at this commitment of probably two to three years. Um, that does not include the implementation. What the plan uh, has in it is uh, requirement is that you have a plan for implementation plan and what your strategies are. Normally there's an implementation committee, committee. that follows the comprehensive Absolutely. plan committee. Okay. And then lastly, regional coordination program. I think something was this close to Don's side. <laughs> Is, yeah. is, is a, a state requirement that what we do is at least attempt and say what we're willing to do and uh, to with our surrounding communities. Right. And I think that if, if, if um, I'm looking at things, especially public health, safety, and welfare, um, I, I don't see how communities like us are going to be able to go forward um, without huge amounts of investment in order to do that in the future. We're talking about the next 10 years. So certainly an important part. Um, so uh, I just got this as a, a, a quick uh, and dirty um, type of an outline for us uh, to kind of work from. Any other? Yeah. Yes. I wanted to point out that right now on the regional coordination piece, the county is using some of their ARPA money to study that very thing. And there'll be a report completed shortly uh, that, that'll talk about it by subregion. So we'll be grouped with the, the towns that we would work with normally. And so that'll be a big help. And does the state reach out to you, Don, as far as uh, getting, or does the, does the state reach out to individual municipalities and ask what you've been doing and what your plans are? On regionalization? Yeah. They do not. They don't. This, so, would be the, this is the county that's doing this, yeah. but we've been pushing for this for a long time. <coughs> the problem has been that the towns that we naturally interact with, except Wyndham, which we do interact with very closely, really weren't there in terms of their desire to do that. I'm talking the towns to the west of us. So I think that's changed, though. It's changed a lot. We're closer now in maybe the way that we do business and culture and so forth. And so I think that the report the county does is going to be very instructive on strategies and uh, directions that we can work together that will uh, benefit us all. So I'm really excited about that one. And they're paying for it with their opera money, so that's nice. We did do a study, by the way, about 10 or I mean, maybe 15 years ago, we studied that too with the town of Casco was eligible to get a CDBG grant. They got that. We looked at consolidating public safety. We were all in. Uh, Casco and Naples were not all in. So even though they, that was their stu Casco study, but uh, so it never happened. But I, I still believe it should happen, and will happen. Has to happen. We don't have the resources otherwise. I agree. Uh, any other observations as far as the uh, uh, the growth management uh, plan, the elements? All right. Just have one question. Sure. <clears throat> um, the checklist with the 200 to 250 points is that supplemental to this in a link somewhere, or because it? I thought he said if I because I, I mean I read through this I didn't see 200. No, it's, he, he said it was on chapter. their website. It's and on I the main on dot okay. Okay. So it is a separate document. I'll be yeah, finding it, it and making a link on their page. I just okay. looked at it a minute ago. It's it's on the link. It is yeah. great. It won't be a picnic <laughs> to get one that they like. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, if, if we hire Tom to do it, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh no, I'm sorry. We won't be doing that. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, it's a process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, uh, discuss uh, in the draft RFP for the uh, contract consultant planner. Thoughts? Observation. I thought it was a very good draft. Yep. yep. Good start. Yeah. Uh, my, my only major comment is that section four, the proposal submission expectations, I thought mirrored a lot of section eight. Um, you know, because it's essentially expectations and then requirements. And I didn't know whether we could just combine the two sections. Mm Can you tell them a little bit about what you did there, Sue? I think you combined some things already. I plagiarized what I already did. <laughs> what I, did. Um, um, I took York's. They seem to be the most concise. And um, 
thought it would be better to start small and add to rather than start large and start cutting away. Yeah. Um, so, but I didn't really look at it with that in mind so much. I, th I thought you had mm -hmm. cut and paste. You didn't do that at all. No, I took Just all York. of Yorks. All of Yorks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All and of none of Kenny Bones. <laughs> just, for, just for fun, though, York is the uh, second most valuable community in the state of Maine. Did you know that? Behind Portland. I did not. Mm -hmm. I did not. Yeah, that's well, right. And I thought that they... York. On si size-wise and whatnot, I thought they probably lined up a little better with us than some of the others, too. That was another reason I chose theirs. So, but I will look, we'll sort of like a look at those two sections. I didn't really look at it from that point of view. Yeah, I, I thought it was really good. I mean, I thought it was nice and brief, which you know I think is helpful. You know, getting a, a really long RFP is, is more tedious when you kind of filter through those requirements through sort of the interview process and mm -hmm. some of that kind of exchange. So. Uh, Along the line of getting somebody experience, the, the RFP, they're going to have seen this one, they're going to have seen, you know, others, uh, the people that we want to consider, and the, the field is going to be a lot smaller than it was in 04, but yes. he, the point about it, getting somebody well experienced in doing these plans is right on, and, mm -hmm. you know, I won't say the RFP is, is not, you know, that huge a deal, but it's really not that huge a deal. I mean, you're going to be interviewing these people, you're going to be looking at the experience, you're going to be telling them what to do once you hire them. Sure. Mm -hmm. so. and, and I believe what was discussed earlier is that there may be a subcommittee of this committee that actually will, will do the interviews, so exactly. it won't require all of us to be doing that. Uh, so as we get closer, we'll, we'll be making that. And, and these people, they want to, as he did make the point, they want to get in and out and get this done. They, they, if they've done this before, they're going to know what to do. Yeah. They're going to know what that checklist is. Exactly. Yes. They're going to know Rule 208, inside and out, yeah. in state statute. This is a bit of a formality, something you have to do, obviously, to do a, have sure. a good process, sure. but um, and to make sure that you're fair and open, transparent, all that stuff. Absolutely. And that's what this is about. Yeah. But the, what's going to be important is that interview and selecting the person that fits us. Sure. And I think, to, you know, certainly uh, Tom's uh, observations are helpful. Um, I guess what I would say is in looking at the policy that the town has, that, I mean, as far as the, when, you, when you go in for the, it's not just an interview with this committee. But they're going to actually go in with HR and, and have an interview, and so there's also going to be contractual and, and requirements uh, require uh, that'll, that'll be there uh, that incumbent on the applicants. Yeah. You absolutely want to submit the plan before you have it voted on. You absolutely don't want to pay them their final payment no. until the thing gets approved. Yes. Sure. Sure. So any of the comments that Tom had, do we think that those might be might need to be included in the draft? I think he was talking about some sort of time frame. For I, the I took some notes on that, and I thought it, if I put those in and then send the draft out to all of you folks for next meeting, possibly. Does that work mm -hmm. for everyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only thought I had on mm -hmm. on the uh, RFP was that it, it will get three or four, two or three, not more than one, um, probably less than five, mm -hmm. and, it, it, mm -hmm. and they'll each be somewhat unique in their, in their in the proposer's approach and then costing and fee statements for those services. So it, it won't be as easy to compare apples and apples mm -hmm. if you had a matrix of, mm -hmm. you know, and cost per meeting or whatever and, and um, cost to, to, you know, do the inventory. Um, do the, and, and some of the other stuff obviously couldn't be because it, it might go in different directions, but it, I, and I think that's fine. We just have to be ready to, to review those qualitatively different uh, proposals with, with probably different pricing arrangements. And, and they'll each be individual, and we won't be able to really compare apples to apples so much other than looking at the whole picture. Mm -hmm. um, it'll require us to do a thoughtful review of the proposal, so that's good. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I look at it like you were hiring an employee, you'll want to have a standardized set of questions. You'll want to have, what you, like you say, you'll, you'll want to be able to um, have some sort of a spreadsheet or something that, that will uh, delineate all those factors and compare them so that you can do that in a handy format. And so, uh, you know, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of agree. I think they're all going to be, they're organizations, so they're, it's not going to be one person. It's going to be an organization of staff. They're going to have, uh, it'd be like interviewing for a law firm to represent the town. You've got, right. you got big big town 
lawyers and you've got little town lawyers and all the ones in between. And I think that uh, they are, they're they not going to be apples and apples. Right. It's going to be uh, a mixed bag and we're going to have to pick the right fit. And I think that, uh, you know, with the subcommittee and then report back, I think that will work really well. Okay. And obviously we, the town staff will be involved in that and we'll have the town attorney review the RFPs and um, before we sign a contract it will all be reviewed and we'll be good to go. Okay. Now I don't know if you want to do this or not, but mm -hmm. normally when you go for architectural services you do it cost blind, you know, so you do your interviews and you have a separate envelope for the for the pricing and they're very sensitive about that. I found out years ago building a new town office, you know, and so I mean you don't actually have to select, you know, the, the person who has um, I guess the lowest cost and and I guess the bias would be that you know maybe the the best fit uh, may not be the person with the lowest cost. So you consider the cost and the and the quality of the proposal separately. I guess is the qualification based search sort of way of doing it. I don't know if you like that or not. But typically we we always look at the cost here, and then they say now go negotiate a better deal. <laughs> so you tell me what you like. I'll do it either way. <clears throat> well, well, and I think where the apples to apples can come in is once you have an RFP, you can with their proposal go through, okay, number one, did they answer that question? What was their answer? Number two, and have some apples to apples that way just based on what they get back. And that's what I've done in the past with some. But I guess that's a ways away. You can talk about that when you get ready to do a lot of this when you get ready to do interviewing. Sure. Yes. I, I don't know if I, I, I probably could have asked the question better to Tom, but, but maybe the municipal side or the legal side can, can help me understand this a little bit. So it seems as I read the, the management plan, and it, it talks about statute. And uh, I believe right in the first, uh, as far as uh, the draft RFP, I, I, I found in the introduction, page one, what made me feel comfortable, which was it's the, it states that the work will result in a plan consistent with the Growth Management Act of the state of Maine. Mm -hmm. So it's almost kind of as as Chris and Don are observing. You know, it's it's they're gonna they're gonna basically do what they do. We're not gonna hire someone who has not had this experience uh, from the legal vantage as well as every other situation. Yeah. It's almost impossible to believe that a town would spend three hundred thousand dollars and hire somebody who had never done a plan. I, That's almost I, impossible. I know. To it's like they didn't look at the resumes. Yeah. The well, the towns are, towns are different. It's a <laughs> I'll call it a Falmouth solution. Years ago, they couldn't decide between the two top planners, so they hired them both. <laughs> so that's what that's yeah. kind of what you have with Kennebec. What? Along with that, uh, make that feel good that, that you know that, that right in the RFP, they're going to have to comply with state yeah, the growth management, right. which kind of then covers everything. Yeah, I actually really appreciated Tom's comments on the the way in which this is interpreted because one of the questions that you're always wondering when looking at legal statutes is how strictly do they follow these statutes and sometimes and he mentioned chapter 208 which is my next stop so to to it sounds like there's much more reliance on that and the checklist than what's necessarily built in here because you can interpret a lot of these words in a lot of different ways which gives you wiggle room to do or to um, to create a plan that works with your municipality, which goes back to the finding the best fit for what our town actually is. Well said, Danielle. And, and that's kind of where I have this little uh, 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 conundrum because on, uh, on, on, as I read to Tom, on page six, the consultant will assess uh, how consistency with the state statute might support or hinder the proposed goals and policies of the town. That almost seems, it, it's, so it's kind of uh, in conflict. It's, it, it, if, I guess my question is, does the amendment to the state constitution regarding home rule cover any of this? Well, and then my next question to you is, what does consistent mean? <laughs> and so <laughs> uh, there's a, sure. you know, there's, I, I don't know the answer to your yeah. question. So um, it's it, it, having a, um, an opinion like that as to what they hold in priority is really important to us sure. because that that gives us our perspective on how we want to interpret this. Sure. And, and the sense I got was that uh, uh, Tom will know yes. the consistency right. definition. Exactly. Yeah. What I heard it was black and white, but 
pot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's clear as I mean, to melt it right now, that's what I heard. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and so uh, I guess the, 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 uh, uh, ultimately it's, it's uh, I think that the, the, uh, uh, the draft very closely followed the policy I read that the town has for RFPs, which <laughs> I'm glad we have that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I would, I'd ask, are there any more? Because uh, one element that was in the, the growth management plan was a section that said addressing conflicts. And it seemed to me in reading it that it meant that in the plan, if you're not going to be consistent, because it's not in the town's best mm -hmm. interest, then you at least have to provide some sort of explanation, explanation yeah. as to why. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be simple if it's one of the elements is the, uh, the harbor front. Well, that wouldn't be hard for Raymond to uh, necessarily uh, uh, deal with as far as explaining. You know, if you live in the desert, forestry probably wouldn't be something that's going to come up a lot. Uh, so you'd be exempt from that simply by saying, we don't have any trees. We yeah. don't have a waterfront. Right, right. But then others, as I said, and I hate to keep harping on this, but when the state says that 10% of all new construction needs to be affordable housing, and over the last decade and a half, I have asked that of select board members and municipal officials, has this, has the town of Maine ever reached that? The answer is no. Not even close. So we've been non-compliant with that portion of it, which Tom seemed to think is kind of a real hot button. But I guess getting back to Danielle's observation, I, I don't see Don getting hauled away. <laughs> you know, I don't see a lien on my house from the state. So I guess that would be my question. They're still going to take our tax money. Well, they are. And given, that, <laughs> given there's no, as I understand it, no requirement now. I mean, this is, we're doing this for us. Yeah. I mean, we need to be, com you know, compliant with with the, I guess, the strictures, of the law, whatever, as it may still exist. But to me, this is for us. And, I and think if you, and if every plan was the same, you know, I mean, they just hand it out. That's just right. Hand it out. And I and I had to laugh about my hometown of Scarborough. I mean, of course they wouldn't think of forests. There's very few forests left. When I grew up there, it was a dairy cow. I mean, that's not that's not where they're at today. Yeah. I think something we can think about too is finding a candidate who is uh, well versed in what these changes are and these hot topics are, because we've had legal changes that will impact this since this has been published in November of 2021. Sure. So these. All right, what we're reading isn't necessarily up to date because it hasn't it, it, it just it hasn't been amended yet specifically so I and and I think the hot topics will guide discussion to a certain extent whether that's ours or our communities and so finding someone who um, has has a tab on that will be important as we're looking at this in the sense that this is specifically for the next 10 years and we're really trying to make sure we abide by what we want to do for the next 10 years. Yeah. I, I have only one other suggestion. Uh, you know, be popular, it may be popular, I don't know. Under page, page three of the RFP uh, project area, uh, I think the third paragraph down, it starts to describe the history of the town arrangement. And I would like to add two lines and make one word change. The two lines would be that that paragraph starts with, today Raymond residents live on traditional land of the Wabanaki Confederacy. The Algonquin word for Wabanaki is most often translated into dawn land. And then the next sentence, if we could just insert the word European, Mm -hmm. the first European settlers, mm -hmm. and that, that would be my only other addition. I know mm -hmm. it's just an RFP, but I would think at least for this committee, mm -hmm. if we're going to be looking at uh, land acknowledgement, mm -hmm. then all the documents that come out of this should really have some sort of land acknowledgement, if it's getting into uh, describing our history. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's, uh, you know, to, to have that, uh, you know, um, I guess, delineated for us is helpful. That's not something that we have, you know, we talked about that before, but I, I think Sue just probably pulled this out of 
you know, something. Oh, sure. Yeah, I, something, more, something I, we had at hand, more standardized. But I well, absolutely well, agree. I, I stole I, I, it from the previous. Um, stole, stole from the previous. Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. yeah, so, so no, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. The, the, the biggest city in in this state is just getting around to add, adding uh, uh, land uh, uh, acknowledgement in, into their. Uh, so that's uh, that charter. paragraph that starts with the first. The, right. The first arrival of settlers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I can, I'll make those changes. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, well, when I, I, I was the putting this as far as all of these mm -hmm. uh, suggestions for revision or mm -hmm. changes, uh, uh, I'd ask for motion to accept them. Mm -hmm. Move. Mm -hmm. Second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Okay. Opposed? Yeah. So I'll incorporate them and have them sent to, uh, or send them out with the next meeting so that you can. Look right. at the and then when they do the next plan, that language that'll will be, be there. in there. Yeah. That's it. It'll be there. They'll Once you get it in there, that's it. Paste it, it it'll like be it lasts, there. It lasts forever. In, in that's the first that. thing. That's in planning. <laughs> and there'll be a little footnote <laughs> that Peter. Yeah, that's right. Brad has a question. Brad. No, I just asked Sue. Did you get my abstention on that vote? Oh no, yes. I didn't. I did. Okay, I did. I saw it. I will when I watch. I will when I watch the tape. Yes. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and I abstain just because I'd like to have more time for us to discuss that. I'm, I'm always, I don't like committees where somebody proposes something and we, yeah, 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 and we vote on it without discussing it and, and, and dwelling on it. So that's, that's why I abstain. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I apologize, Brad. I'm, I'm new to this uh, um, uh, electronic meeting type thing, so I should be looking up there more. I'll, I'll try and make that effort in the future so I can see you when you get your hand raised. Okay, um, I think we took care of uh, new business. Uh, is there any public comment? Well, I'm not the public, but if I could, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, to get to Brad's uh, point as far as the RFP goes, while you did just vote for me to incorporate those into the RFP, you haven't actually voted on the entire document and whether that's finished. Good point. So, uh, given that it really can be changed later, we aren't anywhere near to the point of having that if set If you want concrete. to, you can have a subcommittee to look at it and report back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is anybody in favor of Don's uh, suggestion? You can do whatever you want. We'll make it, yeah. it's like Burger King and you're the Burger King. Yeah. How so, you like it? So yeah. for, for now, I hope at least the committee members realize it's set in jello. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do whatever you like. <laughs> We're just trying to help move it along. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm all in favor of that, Don. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, is there any public other than so that mentioned? No, no. Any public okay, I'll close. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yes, I don't Chris. know if this is public or staff comment, yeah. but I heard when Tom was talking, he talked about a contact at GPCOG. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you like one of us to reach out to GPCOG? Ooh, I well, think that's excellent. Here's, I, here, I did. I know a guy. <laughs> yeah, cool. Here's my experience. I mean, he may know a guy, but you know, $45,000 for whatever it is, uh, the number of municipalities in Cumberland County. They're a transportation, in my view, organization these days. That's where the money is. We can reach out to them but, uh, and maybe get some sort of guidance from them. But, you know, to me, um, the contract plan of the person that we hire is going to have that expertise. That's who we're going to use. And uh, I don't even know who they have planning there now. But and one of the I was told they didn't have anyone. Didn't have anybody. Yeah, so he said they weren't strong. That's mm -hmm. true. They're not strong in that area. Uh, we tried years ago to use them, and we ended up going a different direction. That was to hire our own contract planner, as you know, from Sebago Technics. And uh, but before that, we had uh, Hugh Cox, and we had uh, you know, Bob we, Fonts. So we, all, we always had a contract planner. But we did work with uh, Carol in Paris there for a while. She, she's long gone. And I know she's long gone. I just okay. didn't know if we should at least just we, see, see if there's anybody We there. can reach out to them, but mm -hmm. I'm not optimistic about it. Yeah, they told me they no longer do planning. No longer yeah, do planning. I, I don't what know. They, I, I wasn't was bringing like it up for that reason. I just brought it yeah. up because Tom mentioned it. Sure. Yeah. And I know that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they're an organization we've worked with in the past. Mm -hmm. But I'm, but if you can I'm find something. Chris, mm -hmm. Chris I'm, I'm in favor of having you reach out. Just see what's yeah. out there. It's an easy phone call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how does the committee feel? Brad's in favor. What harm is it going to do? Maybe just relative to transportation, if that's their specialty. Um, and 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 trans transportation from Raymond to Portland is absolutely a topic on our 
Yeah. Comp maybe plan. maybe that's all we'll get. Maybe that's all mm -hmm. we. But it, I'll make for, the phone if call. there's a contact there that if has competency in transportation and yeah. is affordably available, um, then that that might be a worthwhile phone call to learn. About I, I think you have to be very clear when you talk to them that you're talking about that this. Uh, I guess uh, area of planning that's financed by the state of Maine, because we're not a member, and anything mm -hmm. we do with them as a non-member is by the hour. Anything. Interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's not what I heard from him, but I. I no, no, I'm saying you make sure that you get make the person who they're they're financing at forty-five thousand dollars. Right. The other services are by the hour, so if you call up and make sure they understand where the the context of what you're asking. We're working against the 45k tab for the whole county. For, for the whole county, yeah. yeah. So you can, I see you can what imagine how much planning you're getting. <laughs> right. <clears throat> well, certainly, any, anything that you could get gratis, <laughs> as far as information, would be helpful. No, I'm not saying don't do it. Do it. Yeah. But be, make sure they understand what you're asking. Absolutely. Okay. And and just a, a quick question because you you mentioned it, Don. As far as uh, our uh, contract planner, um, uh, they would not be. Uh, applying for, for the, in this RFP because of a conflict of interest, right? They're already contracted with uh, the town? I don't know if they would apply. I don't know, as I would say, they're qualified. Yeah. You know, they're more, t they're more an engineering firm, technical analysis, that sort of thing. This is much broader. Yeah. I don't think they could answer the question, we've done a comp plan. Yeah, okay. But, but they, I, I don't know that. They'd probably, there'd probably be a meeting or two that they might well participate in, Jim, um, yeah, Seymour. Seymour. He's very good, but I'm just saying just I don't think they do this. If, if we were grinding on some of the thing. ordinance or, or setback stuff and having trouble, he, Jim, not that you wouldn't be able to, Chris, but you know, might, it might be helpful to have him for a meeting or half a meeting or something. Well, I'm sure be willing to do that. Yeah. We should call on anybody and everybody who can help us. I'm, I'm, I'm all for I'm, it. I'm all for that. And yeah. I like the I like the intern idea, by the way, really yeah, a lot. Excellent. Absolutely. Yeah, and, a, and a great thought as far as being, you know, if necessary, to, if we needed more hours, that we could pick up, yeah. you know, some of the hourly rate. That's 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 a great option as well. <laughs> All right. Um, as far as uh, committee comments, any observations or comments? On the schedule, I, um, if he started in March of '23. Um, it, I thought to myself, reading through the stuff this afternoon, that it would be nice to be at town meeting in June of 25 to avoid his well-stated um, attrition risk. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's just inherent on us to stay focused and stay focused as best we can and, and uh, get through the get through the chapters. And a good planner will hopefully help us do that. Um, but I, I, I think that schedule shouldn't be out of reach, a 2025 June town mm -hmm. meeting to get a vote on the, on the final plan. Mm -hmm. If there's some kind of check marks along the way, see how we're doing in terms of scope, schedule, and budget. Any other uh, committee comments? Jackie, Brad? Yes, Brad. Uh, I do. A, a couple. First off, it would really be helpful for me and, and perhaps other committee members if before we conclude our meetings, if there are bullet points that whoever's chairing the meeting can just reiterate, okay, here's what we're going to do. We formed a committee of, you know, for the election day survey, whatever. Here's who's on it. Um, you know, we've got boat tours on this day. We've got bus tour on this day. Here's who's going to coordinate the bus tour. If it's Sue, it probably ought to be somebody on this committee rather than put that on the town to do that. Um, but if we could do the bullet points, and then Sue, if I can ask this of either you or of Kayla or, um, I keep wanting to call you Charlie, I'm sorry. But if we could ask you know, one of the you who are in leadership to get that right out to us so we don't have miscommunication issues like we had <coughs> on the previous so we know if we're supposed to contact you, Sue, we've got that follow-up, and it wasn't just, oh, yeah, I thought it was this, and somebody else thought it was this. So again, what I'm asking is a summary of bullet points before we close the meeting, when our next meeting is included in that, um, and, and then if Sue or somebody could get this out to all the committee members within 
you know, 48 business hours or so after it takes place. Thanks, Brad. Jackie, any comments? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think my only thought at this point is, um, you know, I'm I'm one of those types of people that really likes to see a roadmap laid out and um, general time frame for what uh, we're working towards in the next you know meeting or in the next couple meetings um, and I'm just wondering if we want to kind of maybe not tonight but at the next meeting talk about um, kind of a, a general time frame goals for our you know, maybe a, a, it's per quarter you know what is our goal in this next three months um, and how are we going to achieve that? And, and what are the steps that we can, you know, um, take to make that happen? You know, I know Sue does a lot of the work behind the scenes. I think you froze there, Jackie. But uh, uh, I appreciate that. And, and um, what I would ask is that, uh, um, uh, that the, most of that, that information should be uh, contained in the minutes. and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, definitely, we can we can look at having that on the next agenda to mm -hmm. look at some sort of yes. a rough timeline for um, mm -hmm. uh, different elements. This, I think that's what I'm hearing. What element are we going to look at? Are we going to look at water? Are we going to look at housing? Uh, that type of a thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, I love electronics. <laughs> um, okay, mo a motion to adjourn. So, uh, 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 did my did my you know action points get anywhere? They're going to be in the minutes. <clears throat> but nobody summarized them at all for, there, I mean, was, when it, was everyone oh, clear on? Um, yeah, I mean, it seems a little bit duplicative, Brad, I will say that. I mean, Sue, you generally, I thought you've done an excellent job at the minutes. Oh, thank you. And um, I know I wouldn't come close to that. Uh, or any of us in trying to reinterpret what, I mean, Sue's minutes would, if I tried to do it, Brad, it would be a mess. Um, and your minutes are generally out in. I try to get them out within a week. In, in a week, and they and tomorrow they, I'm sending out over 200 absentees. They won't be going out in the next 48 hours. That I can tell you for this um, for yeah, this week. What I can do, if 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 you would like me to, uh, co-chairs, is to go through what we have right now or what I have captured so far. Um, that's action items. We do have a. Um, a subcommittee that's been formed to draft what's going to um, be presented at the election on June 8th, and that's made up of Brad, Danelle, and Frank. Um, there's the upcoming boat tour on October 13th. I'll be sending out a uh, time to the committees, and hopefully I'll do that within the next day or two. Um, on October 27th in the morning, There'll be a bus tour, um, and I'll send the time out for that as well. So there really isn't anything that anyone needs to get to me right now, unless you do, if, if in looking at the, the RFP, if you see anything that you'd like to change, like some of your verbiage, for instance, um, with the history is, as an example, um, because it's still a draft document, the committee members could just send them to me and I could include them. Um, before I send out a packet for the next meeting. And I believe the next meeting you're you wanted to meet on the first Wednesday, so that would put us at <coughs> the 2nd of November. Thank you, Sue. Did you get that, Brad? Yeah, thank you. Yes. And yeah, by good. the way, Sue, that was all against you. you I, I'm very pleased that you're doing minutes mm -hmm. for us, and we have somebody, because that was a concern I had beforehand, and I think it's wonderful. It just is, I realize there's an awful lot on your plate, and this isn't the primary uh, responsibility you have. And when there are action points that take place between, you know, when the minutes get out and so forth, and we don't know about them or there's confusion, that's, that's what I want to avoid. Mm -hmm. I want everything to kind of flow smoothly, and that's why I brought it up. So, all right. Now, yes. one question can I ask? Are, are we firm then the first Wednesday of every month until? Otherwise, we can put on our calendars for meeting at 6.30? Uh, I believe it, the, the discussion in, uh, was that it's uh, at least through to the December. Yes. 
um, they okay. were going. They were. That's when the calendar meetings would be. Okay. So that's the first Wednesday of the month. November two, December seven. That's as far as we've gone. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Certainly. There's a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor? Opposed? Good night.